Well, welcome to our worship service here at Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd in Red Deer uh, on this fourth Sunday in Lent. Special welcome uh, goes out also to those of you who are with us from home and participating through our online service. Today marks the first anniversary of online services, believe it or not. It's been a full year uh, since we've had uh, open services. Uh, marks a full year uh, since we've been able to share the peace with a, with a handshake or a hug. And, uh, and, and so it's, it's remarkable that it has been a, a year. It's not a great anniversary to celebrate, mind you, but we, we, we know that we've been at this for a while because it has been so long. And hopefully with these vaccinations underway, our hope is that our uh, remote worshiping uh, we'll have now an alternative fairly soon and we'll be able to have uh, worship face to face once again and the online services will be an option uh, for everyone. But until then, remember that we are still most certainly united in Christ through the Holy Spirit, whether we are worshiping here or whether we're worshiping at home, we are united in that body of Christ. And likewise, today we celebrate the sacrament and the presence uh, the presence of Christ through this sacrament. And so uh, we welcome uh, those of you at home to participate with us. Uh, we do welcome all of the baptized to, to join us in this sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Uh, simply have some bread and wine handy and available for that part of the worship service. Now, let's begin our worship by joining together in our brief order of confession and forgiveness. If you'd all please rise with me as you are able. Now the Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, God of all mercy and consolation. Come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Join together in our gathering song, Come Now is the Time to Worship.
Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your light, that all our deeds may reflect your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The reading of the word. The first lesson comes to us from Numbers, chapter 21 verses 4 to 9. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, 
We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 107 will be read responsively. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those he redeemed from trouble, and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were sick, there was a simple waste, and because of their iniquities, endured affliction. They loathed any kind of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. Then, then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and, and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them, and delivered them from destruction. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. And let them offer thanksgiving sacrifices and tell of his deeds with songs of joy. The second lesson comes to us from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. for this fourth Sunday in Lent is taken from the Gospel of John, this from chapter 3, beginning with verse 14. Glory to you, O Lord. Now Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, 
so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Well, hello kids, and uh, and welcome to the children's message. Uh, Just a question. how do you like school when you have to learn something? If you're like me, I enjoyed school when I didn't have to learn, when I could be outside during recess or, or noon hour lunch break, and that kind of thing. Um, but did you know that before uh, those big bells that ring in schools uh, were around, they used to have to go outside, teachers did, and they used to do something like this. They used to ring the bell or when you were in class and the class got a little bit noisy, what would the teacher do? Ring the bell. And then you knew class was in. In today's gospel lesson, guess what? Class is in. Maybe part of the gospel lesson that you didn't hear was the part where it tells us who Jesus is talking to. And there's this fellow Nicodemus who came to Jesus, and not even during the daytime when regular school is in, but he came to Jesus at night. And he wanted some answers about some questions that he had. You see, because Nicodemus was a teacher. He was a teacher of the Jewish faith. And Jesus was around, and he was saying some things that Nicodemus had some issues with and had some troubles understanding. And so he came to Jesus at night, and Jesus talked to Nicodemus. And he told Nicodemus about a new way of understanding God, a new way of of being with God and of God being with us, and a new way of life. In fact, a new kind of life. One that Jesus in today's lesson called being born anew or being born from above, but being reborn in God through Jesus. And that's a big lesson and it's sometimes hard to understand, but it's that Jesus comes to us so that we can have a new kind of life with Jesus and with God through Jesus. And that's something entirely new. And so indeed, class was in. And Nicodemus had to stretch his mind just a little bit. And it stretches ours too. To understand why it is that God would want this kind of a new life for us. And then Jesus goes on to explain why. Probably the most famous uh, verse in the Bible. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son, Jesus, uh, that whoever believes in him will have a new life. And so class is in, but to understand why it is that God would do this is perhaps the most important lesson yet. Certainly in the Gospel of John, that God loves the world, the whole thing, because God created it. God loves what God created. And we're a part of that. And so God loves us beyond measure. Uh, Loves us so much that Jesus would eventually go to the cross and there suffer and die for us. And then on the third day, rise again. So that we would have the guarantee, the assurance that we, like Jesus, rise again too. So it's a great lesson. And 
class is over. Let us pray. For words of scripture on this day, we give you thanks, O God, and pray that you bless your word to our hearing, setting our hearts and minds on fire and renewing our spirits with your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Be seated. Today, we have a, a different kind of a presentation for you. And uh, you, you, may, you may know or you may not know that uh, one of the focuses of our Synod of Alberta for this season of Lent is the care of creation. And uh, I, I have uh, contributed to this, uh, to this piece and uh, my con contribution was to go out into those wonderful rocky hills out there and put together a, a video uh, which some friends of mine helped me put together. And so uh, I invite you to, uh, to watch that with me as uh, we consider what it means to care for creation. And the Spirit immediately drove Jesus out into the wilderness. When it comes to our 21st century struggle to adapt to the new realities in the environment around us, such things as climate change can cause a great deal of anxiety. Our responses as people of God in Christ and the secular community are often, though, focused on human survival, human justice issues, and human community. All of these being, of course, very important. But what I would like to ask now is, what value does creation have apart from the value that we as human beings place on it? What value do our wilderness areas have apart from what we can take from them? And what intrinsic value or God-given value does the whole created order have apart from the value that we as people place on it? Christ walks into the wilderness not only for the 40-day fast, being tempted by the devil, but walked into the wilderness areas to pray, to commune with our Heavenly Father. Well, greetings in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. We're here up on a mountainside overlooking the Yaha Tinda area uh, here in our eastern slopes of the Rocky Mountains. And the Yaha Tinda uh, has been in human history for a very long time. In fact, Yaha Tinda in the Stony language means mountain prairie. If you look across the valley, you'll see there's another, mount another mountain valley just straight behind me, and that leads to Banff National Park. Uh, that'll, if you follow that for, I think, a couple of days, you'll maybe one, <laughs> at one point reach Lake Minnewanka. The place around here, I've been back here quite a number of times, and this is one of my favorite places, uh, what I like to call one of my sacred places. Uh, I have quite a number of them in the mountains, and uh, not to mention a few that are on the prairies as well. And I call them sacred places because they are special to me. They are wilderness places uh, where I do get a sense, uh, even through the landscape around me, of just what kind of a creation, what kind of planet that God has made. It seems to me that when we look at 
the issues that we have as the human species on this planet. And we try to get a handle on the whole idea of climate change and what we need to do about it. We're looking at it from a, a rather human perspective. And it seems to me that we've missed a step. And the step that we've missed is what I like to call, and what I think others have called, the intrinsic value of creation itself. Apart from the value that human beings place on it, and apart from the value that our societies place on it. We tend to place value on nature as a human uh, society according to what value we can attain from it, not what value is already there. But as we go through this season of Lent, we will visit Jesus in the wilderness as one of the key gospel lessons during this whole time when Jesus wanders out into the wilderness for 40 days. But Jesus uses the wilderness as well on a number of occasions, a place where he goes to perhaps for himself settle, to find a place of quiet where he can commune with God. And that should be a lesson to us, I suppose, as well, that Jesus was in the wilderness, and yet Jesus did not attempt to change the wilderness. As a human society, we have changed so much of the wilderness to suit ourselves and to make ourselves comfortable, and some of it is important. But again, if all that we're doing is placing our own value on creation, then we miss the finer points of what the Bible has to say about the wilderness about creation, about nature, our environment. If we go back to the very beginning of the Old Testament into Genesis chapter 1 and 2, some of what we read there has, I suppose, inspired human society to pillage nature instead of care for it. Genesis chapter 1, near the end, God sees after finishing the creation, uh, that it is very good. And just prior to that, however, we meet the words to subdue, to subdue it and have dominion over it. And those words are used uh, often in human history and in church history as justification for some of the things that we have done to the world around us and to nature. But we forget the words that God looked at everything and said that it was very good. And that is with humanity, with Adam and Eve, right in the midst of the whole of the thing. And God sees the whole as very good. Not separate pieces, not humanity in and of, of itself, but sees the whole of it and says it is very good. And it's too bad we often don't go on from there. Genesis chapter 2, where God instructs the man and the woman to till and to keep. And that's a very different mood, I suppose, very different words being used there in chapter 2 and are words that perhaps should instruct our interpretation of words like dominion and subdue. And that God says it is very good, gives it the value, not from ourselves, but a value that is in creation right from the very beginning. In John chapter 3, we all know this, this most famous of phrases that Jesus says to Nicodemus, for God so loved the world. And the word there, world, in the Greek means cos, is, is cosmos, which actually translates to the whole of the world, to the created world, the created order. And God loves this. And this, again, beyond just humanity, God loves the whole thing. And when it comes to the work of Christ, the work of redemption, salvation, forgiveness, these also, if we were to go beyond that uh, John 3.16 into uh, Paul's letter to the Romans, where Paul writes about the whole of the creation waiting, groaning in expectation along with us for the day of redemption that Paul himself waited for and writes about in that moment. 
and he sees, perhaps as a good Jewish rabbi, that humanity is not separate, but is in. And our place is much more along the lines of the good steward of the place, rather than those who are above it somehow, more important, and who own it. Ownership is not perhaps in the words of Genesis at all. There is an old indigenous saying that says, we do not inherit the land from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. If we are to move forward as a church, as God's people, into understanding our place on this planet, in the world, and how we are to care for creation, perhaps we ought to go back to the root, the core, the beginning, to see that it's not for our own sake that we do this, and not for just humanity's sake that we care for the planet, but we care for the planet because it has value in God's eyes. God loves this place. And what justification can we use then to love it less than how God loves this place? And perhaps we can then begin to find more and more of those wonderful sacred places of our own. Amen. Pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. We join together in our prayers. Please rise with me. We join hearts and minds together as we pray. Gracious and merciful God, you sent your Son that the world might be saved through him. Inspire the witness of the church everywhere. Empower pastors, lay ministers, deacons, and all church workers. Empower church councils and congregations in the work of the church done in your name. 
Guide them in all the deliberations and decisions for this coming year, as many gather for their annual general meetings at this time. And then bless their work as they put decisions to actions. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy is great. Your creativity and your merciful providing for all creatures are shown throughout your creation. Continue to nourish the seas, deserts, wilderness areas, farmlands, and cities. Inspire us to be the better stewards of all that is yours, that we are called to be. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Where there is hunger for food among your people, thirst for clean drinking water. Provide for these, your people, even through the work of our hands and hearts. Where hatred and racism exist, bring equality and a common love for neighbor. Where warfare and violence cause great strife and destruction, bring peace and redemption. Inspire your church to be the voices of peace, unity, love, and mercy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. By grace we have been saved through Christ. Fill this congregation to overflowing with that grace, that we share this gift with all people. Nourish those in our midst, in body, mind, and spirit, in whatever way is needed in your sight. Sustain, keep, and bring healing to all those here who suffer. And now we bring our prayers of heart and mind to you as we bring all whom we know in need of your care. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. And again, O oh gracious God, in this time of COVID, we pray for all doctors, nurses, and hospital staff who are on the front lines, just as we pray for those who have contracted this virus, especially those in hospitals or in ICUs. We pray that the vaccines will bring an end to this worldwide emergency soon. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. And now we entrust ourselves and all of our prayers to your gentle care. Merciful God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. At this time, we thank you for all of your gifts through this time of COVID. And we pray that you can continue to give through regular mail, automated deposit, or by e-transfer so that the work of Good Shepherd may continue. Now, let us pray. Merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us. To Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There's a call comes ringing o'er the restless wave. Send the light. Send the light. Send the light. Send the light. There are souls to rescue. There are souls to save. Send the light. Send the light. Send the light. Send the light. We will spread, we will spread the everlasting light with the wind, with the wind, heart in hand, heart in hand, giving God, giving God the glory, glory evermore. We will follow, we will follow, His command. Follow His command. Send the light, send the light, the blessing, the blessing gospel, gospel light. light. Shine, shine, from shore to shore, from shore to shore. Send the light, send the light, and then it's radiant beams like the world, like the world forevermore, forevermore. 
We have heard the Macedonian call today. Send the light, send the light, send the light, send the light, and the golden offering at the cross we lay. Send the light, send the light, send the light, send the light. We will spread, we will spread the everlasting light with the wind, with the wind, heart and hand, heart and hand, giving God. Send the light, send the light, the, the blessed gospel light, light. Let, it shine. let it shine from shore to shore. From shore to shore. Send the light, send the light, and let it rain. Let it be like the world, like the world forevermore. forevermore. Let us pray that grace may everywhere abound. Send the light, send the light, send the light. Send the light. And the Christ-like spirit everywhere be found. Send the light, send the light, send the light, send the light. We will spread, we will spread the everlasting light, light with the wind, with the wind, heart and hand, heart and hand. Giving God, giving God the glory, the glory evermore. evermore. We will follow, we will follow His command, follow His command. Send the light, send the light, the, the blessed, blessed gospel, gospel light. Let it shine, let it shine from shore to shore. From shore to shore. Send the light, send the light, and let it shine. It beams be like the world, like the world forevermore. Forevermore. Let us not grow weary in the work of love. Send the light, send the light, send the light, send the light. Let Let us gather jewels for a crown above. Send the light, send the light, send the light, send the light. We will spread, we will spread the everlasting light with the wind, with the wind, heart and hand, heart and hand. Giving God, giving God the glory and the evermore. We will follow, we will follow, follow His command. Shine, from shore to shore, from shore to shore. Send the light, send the light, and let it change your beams like the world, like the world forevermore. forevermore. Please rise. <coughs> The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe, your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. 
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now with this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. O God of the resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast, we pray. Grace our table with your presence. Now, with your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun, moon, and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy trinity, now and forever. Amen. Now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may come, the gifts of God, for the people of God.
please rise. Receive the blessing. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life, now and forever. Amen. Our Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending song, I heard the voice of Jesus say, remind you that we have our AGM uh, at one o'clock this Sunday the 14th so if you watched your service like you would at a normal time at 10 30 then you have time to grab a quick bite to eat and come back for the zoom meeting at one o'clock so uh, we'll see you then and I go in peace to love and serve the risen Lord Thanks be to God.